In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the part of Summit Learning focusing on self-direction. You may remember in our last video, we discussed a little bit about self-direction and what that was, but today we're going to kind of take a deep dive. If you've not already got it out, get a composition notebook, three ring binder, or something with paper in it to take notes. Let's begin. You are going to be splitting time between learning how to access the self-directed learning portion of Summit Learning and why you'll be focusing so much time on this thing called self-directed learning. The how is going to take some time and a little practice on your part. And you'll go over that working with other teachers as well as in here. What we're really going to focus on in this discussion is the why. And to do so, we're going to be asking ourselves a lot of questions and reflecting on what it means to be a learner. Ask yourself this question. What do you think it means to be a self-directed learner? Break the phrase apart real quick. If you're self-directed, you're the one who's directing or in charge of that thing, which in this case is learning. If I'm directing how my learning is going, I'm in charge of said learning. I'm taking ownership of it. And probably most importantly, I'm learning in the way that best suits me. Ask yourself this, what's the best method of learning for me? Many teachers today try to cater to the fact that their classroom full of students all probably learn in very different ways. Some people do great listening to the teacher discuss a topic for a long period of time. Others do better when they have something visual to look at with their eyes, like a video. And others learn best by working with others in groups. The SDL part of the Summit Learning Platform tries to provide you with opportunities to learn about a topic in the way that best suits your learning needs. So to simplify that, self-directed learning is when I learn in the way that best suits my needs. One of the very awesome things that we'll be doing as part of the Summit Learning Platform is exploring those different learning needs, those different learning methods that best suit us. You'll have the time and chance to actually explore that, which leads me to our next point. Self in self-directed learning, we have a variety of learning resources available to do that learning. Example, we'll be looking at videos, we'll be reading articles, we'll have a chance to practice online, and we'll be working in groups. Summit Learning provides you variety so that you can learn in the way that best suits you. Another aspect of self-directed learning is that you'll be learning at your own pace. Everyone learns at different speeds for different topics. I may need a lot more time to learn about a new concept in math compared to learning something new in language arts. That doesn't make me bad at math. It just means I need more time to take apart a topic. So, self-directed learning means I am able to work at my own pace. Finally, becoming a strong self-directed learner prepares you for the types of learning you'll be doing when you go out to learn as an adult. Summit Learning states on their website that, after graduation, students will not be able to rely on teachers and mentors to navigate obstacles in life. That is why it's so important for them to learn the skill of how to manage tasks on their own without the guidance of others before they leave school. A lot of adults are entering college today and realizing that they're not ready to learn on their own. College programs today put a lot more emphasis on giving you the tools to learn and asking you to do so on your own. If you are a strong, self-directed learner by the time you get there, you'll be perfectly great. So to sum up, by practicing self-directed learning, I learn in the way that best suits my needs. I have a variety of learning resources available to do that learning. I work at my own pace, and I'm able to practice the skills and habits essential to being a lifelong self-directed learner. All right, that caps off the first part of our discussion. Now we're going to look at something called the self-directed learning cycle. So on Summit's website, they have this graphic that I really, really like because it shows how the self-directed learning cycle is set up for students to use. We're going to look even deeper at that, though. Feel free to pause your video if you want to and kind of just set this whole thing up in your notes. Draw out the cycle, the circle that you see in the middle, and these little boxes coming out from it because that's the main part we're going to look at and need to remember. Start out by reflecting on any prior learning you're did your plans in the past work? Did you set the right goal? And how will you change what you do this time? You're gonna then continue the cycle by setting that goal. What do you want to learn? The next step is actually planning for that learning. What do you need to do in order to achieve this goal that you've set for yourself? After you've set your goal and planned, you're going to begin actually learning. 
follow through on the steps of your plan and adjust your plan as necessary. Next, you're gonna show or demonstrate your mastery over what you've learned. And you're gonna cap off the cycle by reflecting. Did your plan work? Did you set the right goal? And how will you change what you do next time? While we're gonna apply the self-directed learning cycle specifically to working on those focus areas as part of SDL time for school, this is the type of thing that can help you actually set goals plan for those goals, and carry them out when you're doing any type of learning. Let's look at actually setting those goals and putting them into practice. Here's some ways that you can achieve those SMART goals. I would recommend putting this into your notes as well. First, be specific. What do I want to accomplish? Next, make sure that your goal is actually measurable. How will I measure the achievement of my goal? Next, make sure your goal is actually achievable. What are the specific steps to reach my goal? If I plan it out in advance, I have a better chance of actually getting it done. Ask yourself if this goal is relevant. How does this goal relate to my long-term goals and interests? Make sure your goal is also time-based. When do I want to complete my goal? Now you'll actually practice setting these goals with your teachers, but I still wanted to give you kind of a heads up as to what you'll actually be doing. So let's look at what that might actually look like. You're signing into Summit Learning and it's your SDL time. You're going to go look at your power focus areas and see what you need to get into. I need to get into reading strategies 6. I go into my weekly chart and I set a goal. I've not even started that focus area, so I'm going to set a goal to complete the diagnostic. That's going to tell me what I actually need to learn, what I need to plan out so that I can complete that power focus area. I type it in, I go ahead and go back into reading strategy six and I start that diagnostic. So new example, let's say that I completed that diagnostic on Monday and once I've got it done, I can actually start setting more clear, concrete, smart goals for myself. So on Tuesday, I put a goal into my planner that says I'm gonna actually set smart goals. I'm gonna look individually at what I messed up, what I could do better in, what I can improve in, and I'm going to study that. I put a goal in to take video notes because that's the way that I've determined is great for me to learn. I put that in, set the goal, and I'm good to go. While that's sort of just a preview, you're able to do all parts of the self-direction cycle within the Summit Learning platform. You're able to reflect, how'd I do last time? You're able to set a goal like we just looked at in the week tab. You're able to learn using the different options on the platform. You're able to show that work in the content assessments that you'll need to do, and then you'll reflect again before starting over. So remember, this video is just part of a long process of us getting into Summit Learning and putting all the pieces together. Your notes will help you in the long run, so make sure not to lose them. And thanks for watching.